Hello, and welcome to this series of lens tutorials from Canon. I'm Rob Crow. And I'm Jenny Hare. And the purpose of these tutorials is to have a look at different lenses, what they can do, and what sort of lenses you might want to use to achieve a particular effect. One of the easiest ways that we can change the stories that we tell photographically is to change our lens. And one of the very first things we're going to want to ask ourselves is, what do we want from a lens? Do you want to bring something in the distance closer to you or focus in on something really small? Is it a wide-angle landscape that we're after? Or do you want to capture the character of a person in a portrait? And when we're choosing lenses, we need to look at some key concepts. Things like focal length, maximum aperture, how much light we can let into the lens. They're going to let us control our angle of view and things like depth of field. Don't worry if some of these concepts are new to you. We'll explain them all in depth throughout the tutorials. We're also going to be looking at some of the new and exciting technology in modern lenses. The lenses that you choose are going to give you levels of control that underpin all the decisions you make when you're taking photographs. Let's not forget, really good photography is about making captivating, imaginative images that engage our viewer on an emotional level. Until recently, we only shot film in our cameras. And this sort of 35mm film gives us a proportion much like this. Now, of course, we're mostly shooting digital, and the film's been replaced by an electronic sensor at the back of the camera. The proportions of these sensors are still very similar to 35mm film. In fact, they're modelled off that classic format. But the size of sensors varies from camera to camera. You might be using a DSLR like this 60D. In here, there's an APS-C size chip. And that has an image size a little more like this. Lenses cast a circular image. When we make a circle around the chips, the larger frame chip receives slightly more of the image than the APS-C chip. What that means is the APS-C chip is, in effect, cropping the image a little. We have an effective magnification of the image of about 1.6 times. That's something that could really be important to you if you're a sports or wildlife photographer, because it effectively increases the focal length of your lens. So, you've had your DSLR for a while, and the kit lens that it came with. It's a decent lens, but you're probably thinking, why are there all these other choices of lens? And what kind of one might you want to change to? One of the first things we're going to think about is its focal length. The focal length of a lens is what determines its, its magnification, how close things appear, and also its angle of view, how much of the scene we can see. If we work with a really short focal length, like this 14mm lens, we can get amazingly wide vistas. On the other hand, if we're a sport or wildlife photographer, we're going to want to bring our subjects closer, and we might opt for a telephoto lens, a long lens, a 200, 300, 400 millimeter lens. That's really going to bring those subjects up to us. Lenses tend to fall into two main categories, the zoom lenses and the prime lenses. If you take a zoom, like this 24 to 105 zoom, it lets us vary the focal length. That's what we're doing when we're zooming. We're actually varying the focal length, and that's what gives us that effect of changing the angle of view, changing how close things appear. A prime lens, on the other hand, has a fixed focal length, just one angle of view, one magnification. That means we can't vary like we do with a zoom. It might seem like a disadvantage at first, but the big advantage of prime lenses is they're simpler in construction, and that generally means they can be made faster. Now, when we talk about speed in relation to lenses, what we really mean is how big is the maximum aperture, how much light can that lens let in. That's obviously going to be really crucial to the sort of images we can take, the levels of light we can work in. The other thing we need to consider about the difference between zooms and primes is their physical construction. Zooms, like this 70 to 300 millimetre lens, it's a lovely lens. The weight is largely because it's so well constructed, nice glass in there, but it's got much more presence. We're much more visible as a photographer than if we're working with something lighter, faster, smaller. It might just get us in for that candid portrait. And perhaps the final thing is when we're thinking about perspective. Our choice of lens tends to dictate where we stand, and where we stand dictates the perspective that we see of the world. If we're working a long way away with a long lens, we have a very different feeling in the image than if we're close up with a wide-angle lens. That's probably best illustrated with some images. So, Jenny, what kind of images have you got to illustrate perspective for us? I've got five images here, all shot in the same place, mm -hmm. but from a 14mm all the way to a 200mm lens. Right, so that's quite a range we're talking about. We're going from the very wide to the almost long telephoto lens. This is the 14mm, mm -hmm. 24 moving to the 50, the 135, and then the longest, the 200 mil. OK, and that's quite a dramatic effect. Can you show us that again really fast so we get a real sense of what's happening here? 
we can see, can't we, that as the lens gets longer, the photographer steps back, we're getting a completely different perspective. The long lens is from further away condensing that perspective and it's also removing a lot of background information which could be a really useful way of eliminating background noise and fuss and isolating a subject, making a more dramatic shot. The other thing I notice about the, the 200 particularly is that amount of focus in the background. It's really starting to drop off. That is a function of using longer lenses. As our lens gets longer, the amount that's in focus in the background appears to reduce. But what really controls the amount of focus in an image is the iris in the lens, the aperture. And that's an effect that we call depth of field. So what is depth of field? Well, this is depth of field. Basically, it's how much is in focus in our image, from the very near to the very far. There's a volume of space in front of the camera where there's going to be sharpness, and then there's going to drop off into blur. So how do we control depth of field? Well, it's a function of the type of lens we use. Long lenses tend to give us shallower depth of field than wide lenses. The other thing that controls it is how close we are to our subject. As we move in, focus drops off, depth of field decreases. But what really controls depth of field is our aperture the iris in our lens and how we set it. When we use very small apertures, we get a lot of depth. Everything from the near point to the far point, so maybe a blade of grass to the distant mountains is going to be in focus. But when we use wide apertures, we get shallow depth of field, and that can be really useful for throwing a background out of focus. It can isolate our subject against a messy background, give us a much more powerful shot. It's a really important tool for photographers to be able to manipulate depth of field, and once you learn how, you won't look back. In these tutorials, we're going to look at a whole range of lenses. Lenses that are suitable for portraiture, landscape, sport and wildlife photography, and macro photography. There's almost a limitless number of directions you can take your photography, and there'll be a lens there to help you get started on that journey.